it's Dina here from Jember Designs. This designs video is all about using Photoshop Touch, the app that you can have on your iPad, and how to use it for very simple um, alterations for your photographs. I use it quite a lot just to cut down bits on the photograph that you don't want, um, to cut out background details. I use it to layer photographs one on top of the other, especially for things like my Facebook cover, my YouTube cover photographs, um, and if I've got just something in the background that doesn't look very nice, if I was just doing me as a photograph here, I might take the television out in the corner. It's a very, very simple app to use. I use it, as I say, quite a lot all the time. Hope this tutorial will be of use to you. Thank you. So let's get started on the tutorial on how to create a new Facebook cover picture. Open up the app on your iPad. Now I'm going to create a new project, so you just click the plus button and OK the size. I just start with that standard size normally. I'm just adding a picture in from my camera roll. It's not there, I've just downloaded one from the internet, so I'll click back and then reopen the camera roll so you get the new photos appear that I've just downloaded. I'm using a template from HubSpot, I think that's the right name, Marketing. I'll put the details in the link below. It's a template and it's really, really useful to show you where to the best place to put your photographs is because they do get cropped and moved around on different devices. But this is a fairly standard layout for your Facebook page. So I've put it into my project. I always save at this point. So I've taken it back, you press the back button and that automatically saves it. My iPad tends to crash for some reason if I don't do this, so I do it. Now I'm just going to start adding my photographs to a template. Every time I add a photograph, it'll open in a new layer. So I, whatever I do to this photograph on this layer won't affect what's underneath it. I'm using the circles on the corner of the picture to resize it. The perspective's locked, so it's going to change. It's going to stay the same. In the, the horizontal to vertical stay the same. I'm popping it there for now. If I need to move it, I will do. I want it just to sit above where my photograph will be on the Facebook cover. Again, I'm just saving it, so it helps protect my work from crashing, which is a pain, but there you go. Now, now I'm just tilting my picture to make it look pretty. And thinking about the layout of my design. And once I'm happy with it, I just press that blue tick, say yes please, that's nice. I'm going to put in another photograph now, so back to the camera roll, choose my photograph and just click the tick when I'm happy. I'm working on my one of my tea lights that I make. I'm decoupaging them with tissue paper, photographs, I paint on them, whatever I want to do really on them. Resizing it, making it look in proportion to my other tea lights um, uh, when I'm happy click the blue then back to the camera roll to pick up my next picture I'm scrolling quite slowly through this because I found with my iPad if I scroll too quickly it crashes so there's a surprise I'm going to pick up the photograph I want tick it and click OK and resize it and pop it into where it needs to go or where I want it to go so I'm going to think about it. With the template underneath, it shows you where the writing pops up, where Facebook puts your write, the writing, the Facebook name. So I don't really want anything over the top of that, otherwise it will get lost. I'm just highlighting there where the name will be, so I'm just going to leave that area completely blank. And scrolling down now to find the next little thing that I'm going to put on it. And there we go, as my hair picture that I've done a tutorial on the mixed media hair so I'm selecting that and that's loading out and going into the project again I'm going to resize it roughly in the right position here because what I need to do to this is get rid of all of the stuff around the outside of the picture before I do that I'm going to save my project again so it doesn't crash there we go saved it so it's there in my list of projects and I'll just open it back up again 
when they're saved like this on the project, all the layers are kept separate. Um, so it, you don't lose all your layers. The flexibility is still there to work with each individual layer. As soon as you put it into the camera roll, it merges those layers together um, in the camera roll. So you just get a, like a photograph. Now I'm just playing with where I want it to go, how I want it to be, whether I want it to be straight or at an angle, and thinking about what, where the writing will be and stuff like that. Alright, so I'm fairly happy with it there, but now I want to get rid of that background that I don't like. I'm just choosing the eraser function, looking at the the size, it says brush, but it's the other. Um, I don't want, I want the opacity to be 100%, I don't want anything to show through. So now I'm going to go in with my stylus and carefully around the edge of the picture start rubbing out that background that I don't want. It isn't affecting the pictures underneath because they're on a completely separate layer. They are safe, they're protected. Um, I can keep increasing the size of the brush if I wish. Now to see better, just pinch, use two fingers and pinch on the screen and it will zoom in and zoom out for you. Very easy to alter the size. Photoshop touch, the picture doesn't turn. It's very Whereas on something like Procreate, you can turn and tilt the canvas, which makes it much, much easier to work on. It's just one of the small drawbacks with Photoshop Touch. So now I'm going in and I'm just making sure I've taken out all of that background that I no longer want. I'm just using a, you can change the shape of the eraser on from a circle to an ellipse to a square to a scatter pattern for some reason. Um, but you can choose whichever one will suit your purposes better. And there we go, just continue to do the last little bits. I'm just going to pinch and zoom and move it around so I can make sure I've got everything. The last little bit's gone. Okay. Just pinch it in and have a look. Right. So the bit, the part of the design where the writing will be is clear, the part where my photograph is going to be is clear. So I'm quite happy with the layout. Now I need to think about the background colour on this. To pull it all together, I was thinking of black, and then it makes my tea lights pop. But you can see now where the tea lights are. There's a black line standing out there. And around my under the sea mixed collage, there's a white line, which wasn't noticeable before. So I'm going to have to go in and just get rid of those bits of black that are showing through. It looks grey, the background. It is black. It looks grey because I've got that template sitting there as well. So once that template is hidden from view, background does go black again. There you go. If I just take it off screen for a second, I'm just double checking that everything looks right there. With the template back on, you can see it. It's just grays the picture a little. So now I'm just going to go around with the eraser again and rub out the bit I don't want around that picture. I was on the wrong layer there, so I was rubbing out the wrong bit. Make sure you've got the right layer selected. The layer is the one on the right hand side with the white box around it. The white box means it's active, it's the one you're working on. If the little dot is highlighted, it means it's visible, you can see it. You can have some, you can have as many as you like, but you can't see. Tucked away. Um, sometimes if you're just concentrating on one layer and it's quite detailed, you hide all the others so they don't distract you while you're working on one layer and then bring them all back together again. We're going just very carefully taking out that white background on my picture. And then we'll zoom, pinch, pinch it in so we can see the whole picture again. Take out that template. You don't have to delete the layer, you just have to hide it. Because when I save the picture to the camera roll, I don't want to be able to see that, obviously. Now, 
And the final step before I do save it all is to crop it down to the correct ratio for the Facebook cover. I'm not bothering too much about the pixel size here, so long as it's in the right ratio size, and using that template means it will be, it'll be fine. So there you go, I've hidden the template, I've put it behind the background black layer, just to be on the safe side, to make sure it doesn't pop up, which it won't do, but it's still there, I've got it tucked away. And now I'm happy with that, click that back button, click save, and that's my Facebook cover, the first version done. Now on to my page, Jambay Designs, click the front cover and I'm going to upload my new photograph, which is on my camera roll there, and there it is on my Jambay Designs page. Now I'm a bit disappointed by this because Facebook, for some reason, have put a gradient on their page, so on the camera roll it looks brilliant, love it. If you look at that, there you go, you can see me going, what on earth has happened with that? It's got that gradient, so you're losing all the, the vivacity or the luminosity of the colours in the pictures at the bottom half of your picture. So to see if it was better with a white background, I went back into Photoshop and I changed the background to a white one, and you'll see what that looks like. So back into my iPad onto Photoshop, open up the project, which is still sitting there, all the layers are still open, so I can go straight in, when it finally opens, to the background layer, the black background layer. So you see me highlight, tick it to highlight it. The AND button, fill in stroke, change the colour from black to white, tick it, and we'll have a white background. Now at this point, and at this point you can see I've got lots of black around my two lights that I don't want. So I just go in with the eraser and rub all of that out like I did in the previous part of this video. So I won't show you all of that, it's a bit boring to watch again. Here we are with all the black rubbed out. I'm just going to resize this two light on the left hand side to make it look a little bit more appealing and fill in the gap a little bit more. Um, you can go back and Alter your layers to your heart's content because they're not merged together, they're not blended at this point at all, unless you choose to blend them. So keep them separate until, because there's no reason really to blend them. Unless you run out of layers, if you have too many layers open, it'll say you can't open any more. And then I blend a couple together to give me some more flexibility. So I'm saving that now back to my camera roll and I'm going to put it up onto Facebook and we'll see which one I prefer. So this is what it looks like before you OK it. Facebook say, are you happy with this? You know, reposition your picture. Yes, I'm happy with this. OK it. And then they put that horrible grey gradient picture on it, which spoils most of your hard work when you're doing a nice Facebook cover. Right, it just looks like you shot it in the dark, really. So I'm not quite sure which one to go for, the white or the black. I'll keep it white for now. But let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments box. If you've got any other help with Photoshop Touch, just get in touch and I'll see what I can do. Thank you, bye now.